Hello! In this video, we're going to discuss SuperAlgo's strategy testing features, run a bug testing session, and get ready to start trading live. We are going to be working with Binance data when running a bug test, and we are also going to use Binance to trade live. The setup is virtually the same for other exchanges. And for a trading system, we're going to use an existing open source strategy shipping with SuperAlgo's, the weak hands buster. Before we begin, make sure you have followed the previous steps in this guide and that you do have Binance's USDT BTC historic market data to run the tests on. You can take a quick look at the charts to double check. See if the Binance BTC USDT chart is showing the complete market and check if the charts on the right hand side of the charting space are too showing the corresponding data. Let's go to the network hierarchy, expand it and find the testing environment node. The testing environment features the same three exchanges installed on the data mining section of the hierarchy, meaning that you can use any of the exchanges, provided that you have downloaded the historic market dataset to run bug testing or other types of testing sessions. SuperAlgos features four different trading modes or types of trading sessions. I'll explain each of them in a minute. Let's start our bug test first. To do that, find the paper and bug testing sessions task manager under Binance click Run on the Backtesting Task menu and then click Run on the Backtesting Session menu. It will take 30 to 40 seconds for the session to start showing the progress notice. The session will backtest the Weak Hands Buster strategy starting on January 1st, 2019 and ending on the last day available in the dataset. In my case, that will be around March 28th, 2020. There you go. The session starts showing progress. It'll take about 10 minutes to process. In the meantime, I'll show you around this section of the hierarchy and explain a few important concepts. I mentioned before that SuperAlgos features four different trading modes or types of trading sessions. In a backtesting session, the trading bot instance reads historic market data and applies the rules defined in the associated trading system to generate a trading simulation. In a paper trading session, the trading bot instance reads a live market data feed instead of a historic market data set and applies the rules defined in the associated trading system to generate a trading simulation. So, backtesting and paper trading both produce simulations as the main outcome. These two types of trading sessions are managed from within the testing environment and the main difference with the remaining types of sessions is that these first two do not place orders at the exchange. All they do is produce a simulation for testing purposes. The next two types of trading sessions are managed from within the production environment, as those two do place orders at the exchange and trade with real funds. In a live trading session, the trading bot instance reads a live market data feed, pretty much like in a paper trading session, but applies the rules defined in the associated trading system to place the corresponding orders at the exchange. In a forward testing session, the trading bot instance performs live trading with a user-defined fraction of the available capital. Let's take a look at the structure of nodes that make up the typical trading session task. Instead of a sensor or an indicator bot instance, as we had in the data mining section of the hierarchy, we have a trading bot instance and its process. The process has two offspring. On one side, there is a market reference, which defines the specific market the process works with. On the other side, there is the actual session, in this case, a backtesting session. The session has a set of parameters, which include the base asset, the quoted asset, the time range, the time frame, slippage, and fee structure. We will go through each of those in a minute. Before that, I want to show you that the other types of sessions are set up in pretty much the same way. See? The structure of nodes within the paper trading task is almost the same as in the backtesting task. The only difference is the type of session. We mentioned that the market reference node determines which market the trading bot will be processing. We also hinted when looking at the parameters that there is a definition as of which the base asset is and which the quoted asset is. However, one critical piece of information is still missing. What else do we need to trade? That's right, the rules the trading bot instance is going to apply to do the trading. 
We call those rules the trading system. Within SuperAlgos, the trading system is a framework handling the low-level logic that serves to implement and deploy trading strategies. Trading systems are defined in their own hierarchies. So, how does the trading bot instance know which trading system it should use? The answer lies in the trading session. The session references a trading system. In SuperAlgos, a reference is a mechanism by which information in a node is related to or accessed by other nodes. The ability of a node to establish a reference with another node enables the first to access the information or features entailed in the second one. If you hold down the Shift and Control keys, or Command in Mac, and press the R key, R for reference, you enable the visualization of references, which are represented by grey dotted lines linking two nodes together. See the line here, coming out of the backtesting session node? Where is it going? Left click on the black background to access the design space map. You see? The reference is going to the weak hands buster trading system. References are used throughout the design space to link concepts together so that they may share information. Let's get back to the trading session parameters. The base asset is the asset on which you stand when out of a trade. You may define your initial balance, which is the balance that is made available to the trading system. You may also define your minimum balance, which is a sort of safety mechanism. If your balance ever reaches the threshold set in the minimum balance field, then the trading session stops. The quoted asset has no configuration as of now. It is just a reference to an asset defined in the crypto ecosystem hierarchy. The reference is not visible because the node the reference links to is hidden. We can verify that to make it clear. Let's go to the crypto ecosystem hierarchy, expand it, and make sure the Binance Exchange node is expanded too. And let's expand the Exchange Markets node as well. See the assets defined here with all the incoming references? Now, let's go back to our trading session and there you go. The references from both the base asset and the quoted asset are now visible. And so is the reference from the market reference node. I'll go back and close the crypto ecosystem hierarchy just to keep a tidy workspace and so that the system doesn't need to track the hierarchy any longer. That is a good habit, as any hierarchy that is expanded consumes some resources from the CPU and contribute to slowing down the system. The next parameter is the time range. Here, you define the initial and final daytime for the session. Notice that, in this case, the final daytime is in the future. December 31st, 2020. When the final daytime is in the future in a backtesting session, the trading bot instance will process the historic data up to the present time, or as long as the dataset goes. SuperAlgos allows setting up as many backtesting sessions as you wish, and even run several sessions in parallel, as many as your hardware can handle. Paired with the time branch parameter, this capability grants full control over how you use the dataset to avoid overfitting. You may fragment your dataset in as many pieces and with whatever criteria you may choose. The time frame parameter tells the trading bot instance the frequency with which it must analyze the dataset. In the context of backtesting sessions, what time frame you use to run the session depends on the strategy being tested. If the strategy makes decisions based on the one hour candle and above, for example, then one hour may be the best choice, like in our case here. However, if decisions are influenced by sub hour candles, then you should match the time frame accordingly. The slippage is an assumption on the difference between the simulated bait and the actual fill rate of an order. So, the parameter is a tool to make simulations more realistic. You may set a value expressed as a percentage for the three different occasions in which slippage may occur – position rate, stop loss and take profit. The last parameter is the fee structure, enabling you to enter assumptions on fees, also to make simulations more realistic. You may set a maker fee and a taker fee, both expressed as percentages. Again. You may set up as many backtesting sessions as you wish, meaning that you may easily test different assumptions and contrast the results on the fly. Good. I think we've covered the most important aspects of trading sessions right on time, as the backtesting session seems to be in the last leg processing the last days of March 2020. 
and that's it. As soon as the session finishes calculating, it drops the progress notice. We can now stop the task and check the charts. Let's go straight to the right hand side of the charting space and check the charts we set up for this particular strategy. What we have here is one chart for each trade performed by the strategy all through the period we just backtested. It is a demo setup intended to show how you may control the visualization of simulations. Such a setup of charts may be useful at some stage of the strategy design workflow, probably when fine-tuning entry or exit points. Let's pick a chart to dive into. Weekend's Buster was released in August 2019, so we'll pick one of the trades the strategy made while on duty. Trade 9 is a good example. The goal of this strategy is to accumulate Bitcoin, so it sells the whole Bitcoin balance when price is falling and rebuys Bitcoin at a cheaper price. This first vertical bracket indicates the moment in which the strategy was triggered on, and the second one points to the moment it was triggered off. The big green triangle signals the price and time ranges of the trade. The horizontal side on top marks the take position rate and the time span of the trade. The bottom tip to the right is the exit point, therefore, the vertical side on the right is the price range of the trade. The triangle is green because the trade was a hit, otherwise it would have been red. The legend below shows that the exit of the trade was due to taking profit and that the trade's P&L was 26.78%. The icons here indicate the phases that the dynamic take profit target went through, all the way until the target was hit. This other stop sign icon indicates the stop loss phases. Notice how the stop target trails above the current price, sometimes staying at the same level for several candles and sometimes dropping with the price. The behavior is controlled by simple formulas that make up the rules behind the trading system. Phases for take profit and stop loss are triggered independently when certain conditions are met. When a new phase is triggered, a new formula for the target becomes active. That is why the target may jump like this. Notice this little panel with the running balances of both assets in the trade. When the mouse pointer lies on the candles before the trade, we can see the BTC balance at 1.46 and the USDT balance at 0. When the pointer passes the take position candle, the BTC balance is exchanged for 15,085 USDT. And after the trade, the original 1.46 BTC has turned into 1.85 BTC. This is to show you how the simulation keeps track of balances. Remember that you're browsing a chart like any other, so you may change the time frame, scales, and navigate the market as usual, even move forwards and keep following the simulation into other trades, and so on. One of the cool features of simulations is how you may validate conditions on the fly and know exactly what the value of formulas was at any point in time. You probably don't know much about how strategies are built yet, but I'll show you briefly anyway. These are the conditions that determine when a position shall be taken. Now, if you split the screen between the charting space and the design space to see both the charts and the conditions at the same time, see what happens when I slide the pointer of the mouse on the candles before the take position event. Do you notice how conditions in the design space light up? That means that the particular condition became true on that candle and see what happens at the candle of the take position event. Indeed, all conditions are true, and so is the situation. That is why the position was taken. Now, see for example the stop target in phase 1. This is the value of the formula at this particular candle. See what happens when the pointer slides over the next few candles. That's it. The value of the formula is determined in real time. As you may now figure, simulations are a fantastic asset when designing and tuning strategies. Okay, so I leave it up to you to keep playing with these simulations after you finish this tutorial. Let's move on to live trading. Running a live trading session is just as simple as running a backtesting session. One important difference is that you need a live data feed, so your data mining operation for the corresponding exchange must be running and up to date that is, at 100% for all indicators. 
The second important difference is that the system will need to log into your account at the exchange, and the exchange will want to validate it's you connecting to it. This means that you need an exchange API key, which you will get from the exchange. Once you got your API key and secret key from Binance, you will go to the crypto ecosystem hierarchy, find the Binance exchange, and find the exchange account key node under exchange accounts, user account, and user keys. We will discuss this hierarchy in another tutorial. For the time being, all you need to do is open the exchange account key configuration and carefully enter your keys. Here, in the code name field, enter your API key, that is, the public part of your key. I recommend you first delete the default message and make sure the double quotes are still there. Then, paste the key. Do the same for the secret. Make sure that you don't leave any character that does not belong to the secret. And that's it, we are all set up. Now, let's go back to the network hierarchy and get the data mining operation for the Binance BTC USDT market up and running. While the data mining catches up with the present time, let's take a look at the production environment. There are a few things to consider before running the session. This key instance here is a reference to the exchange account key you have just set up and this is what tells the particular session which exchange account to use, as well as which API key to use. Regarding parameters, there are a few more considerations for live sessions, including paper trading, forward testing, and live trading sessions. First, you may want to set the time frame to one minute. This makes the trading bot instance run once per minute, so that it may react quickly, in particular, to close positions when stop or take profit targets are hit. There are many nuances to the use of the time frame when live trading, but they exceed the scope of this tutorial. The bottom line is that the one minute setting errs on the safe side, while higher time frames may increase risk. Also worth noting for live trading sessions is that neither the slippage nor the fee structure parameter affect the actual trading. They are, however, factored in for the simulations that are still produced and made available on the charts. Okay, let's check the data mining once again. All indicators are at 100%, so we are free to go. We click run on the live trading task and run on the live trading session. And that's it. We are trading live. This particular strategy averages about one trade per month, depending of course on market conditions. So we are definitely not going to sit and wait to see what happens. What you should do when running a live session is to monitor the operation through the simulation on the charts, just like you did with the backtesting session. You may use the main Binance BTC USDT chart, for example, or set up your own charts. Just make sure you turn on the live trading simulations layer and not the backtesting ones. Needless to say, you may also want to check your account at the exchange as soon as you hit the first trade and see how close the numbers match. Remember that, for the time being, what you see on Super Algos is based on the simulation, not the actual fill rates at the exchange. We will most likely upgrade that when we deliver the next version of the execution engine. Great, so that's all folks. I hope you had a great time getting started with Super Algos. There's a lot of information in the documentation, most importantly on the subjects not covered in this getting started guide, like how to design strategies and build trading systems, or how to create your own data mines with your own indicators. You may want to subscribe to this channel to get notifications when the next tutorial becomes available. So have fun and join the Super Algos Telegram community if you haven't yet.